Good morning. The topic allotted to me is approach to an acute episode of positional vertigo. Diagnosis and management by physical therapy and Repositioning maneuver. Penine paroxysmal positional vertigo, BPPV, as we call, is the most frequent cause of vertigo worldwide. It is characterized by severe rotational vertigo triggered by changes in the position of head related to the gravity. Typical situations are lying down, getting up from supine, bending forward, and taking the lateral recumbent positions. The autonomic symptoms like perspiration and nausea and vomiting are more common in the horizontal canal variant of the BPPV. It is a mechanical disorder of the membranous labyrinth caused by vestibular lithiasis, which exists in two forms, canalolithiasis in which the otoconia enter, one of the three semicircular canals, the most common being the posterior one and the least common being the anterior one. Cupulolithiasis in which the otoconia inappropriately become adherent to one of the cupula, making it heavy and gravity sensitive. It exists in two forms with otoconia getting adherent either to the canal or to the utricular side of the cupola. So this is a diagram which is showing the BPPV subtypes around 85 to 90% is posterior semicircular canal BPPV, 10% is horizontal semicircular canal BPPV and less than 1% is anterior semicircular canal BPPV. The left membranous labyrinth of this female is shown. A represents the ampullary di dilatations, which houses the cupola, and this is an impervious barrier. Any movement of the otoconal diabetes has to occur through its non ampullary end, which is common crust, which is formed by the junction of the non ampullary arms of the anterior and posterior semicircular canals and the posterior arm of the horizontal semicircular canal. Why the posterior semicircular canal BPPV is most common? This red one represents a degenerative otoconal debris, which has detached from the utricular matrix. And if it enters the common crust region, it will fall and will get entrapped near the ampullary end of the posterior semicircular canal because of its gravity dependent position. That is the reason why the posterior semicircular canal BPPV is the most common variant of the all variants of BPPV. So, Typically, it is assessed by the positional test. What do we do in the positional test? The head and body of the patient are oriented in a manner that there is ampullofugal or ampullopetal cupular deflection of the involved semicircular canal, generating oculomotor patterns in accordance with the Evolve's law, and that is important for localization and literalization of the involved semicircular canal. Julius Evald framed the name, and according to the first law of the Evald, the generated nystagmus is always directed parallel to the plane of the stimulated canal. That is what we do during the positional test. The generated nystagmus is stronger when the endolymph moves towards the ampulla, that is the ampulopetal cupular deflection in the case of horizontal semicircular canal, the Evald second law, and away from the ampulla, that is ampulofugal cupular deflection in the case of vertical semicircular canals. That is the evolves third law. These second and third laws are used when we assess the positional nystagmus and decipher, that is, literalize as well as localize the canal. What is done to treat BPPV? The non ampullary arm of the semicircular canals have an utricular exit through which the otoconia inappropriately move out of the utricle into the semicircular canal. So, to make it back into the appropriate place that is the utricle, the same pathway has to be used. And during the repositioning maneuvers, the head along with the body of the patients are sequentially oriented in a manner that the otoconia are moved from semicircular canals under the effect of gravity towards the utricular exit. The location is deciphered by the generated oculomotor patterns as previously told. In cupulolithiasis, the inertial forces are generated either by head shaking or by mesteroid oscillations to disengage the otoconia adherent to the cupola by making use of the gravitational force or 
during forced prolonged positional positioning photoconia are facilitated to drop down from the cupola so with this we start the dex halpak test in this gentleman the right sided head hanging position elicits a up beating nystagmus and it has a torsional component the upper poles are beating towards the right ear so this is a commonest variety of the posterior semicircular canal bppv the torsional component is deciding the side it is a right posterior semicircular canal bppv as the patient is taken in the right dex halpak position the excitatory impulses in the right posterior ampullary nerve causes co contraction of the right superior oblique and left inferior rectus that is the excitatory projections of the posterior semicircular canal from the right side are to these pair of muscles and this causes a slow phase which is down beating and left torsional from the patient's perspective the fast phase vor which is a refixation second and is clinically appreciable as positional nystagmus is therefore up beating and right torsional likewise in the when we do a dex halpak test it is always appropriate to do a right apply maneuver in this patient you see the left eye it is beating upwards and there is a torsional component during the dex halpak position try to complete the apply maneuver which is a therapeutic maneuver in the same go to avoid the excessive stimulation to the patient we maintain this position of dex halpak for 1 minute after 1 minute the head is position to the contralateral non involved side and is maintained for around 1 minute after which patient is taken to the opposite non involved lateral recumbent position and is maintained for about 1 minute in this position after which he is uprighted to the sitting position completing one apply maneuver and the diagram in the right panel shows the movement of photoconia from near the ampullary arm of the right posterior semicircular canal towards the cross commune in the cross commune and finally reposition back into the utriculus this is likewise the left dex halpak test eliciting a down beating nystagmus and the torsional component is towards the left side making it a left anterior semicircular canal bppv however in anterior semicircular canal bppv the torsional component is often very small and the insignificant and difficult the excitatory projections from the left anterior semicircular canal are to the ipsilateral left superior rectus and right inferior oblique causing a slow phase vor which is upwards and right torsional and therefore the refixation second which is a positional nystagmus is down beating and left torsional in this case this is another test called the side lying test in this patient side lying test to the left elicits a nystagmus you see in the right eye vessels which is down beating and right torsional so this is a case of right sided anterior semicircular canal bppv if it responds to treatment with the positioning maneuver which is the yakovino maneuver from the long sitting patient is taken to deep head hanging maneuver for 1 minute 30 degree or more below the horizon and this position is maintained for 1 minute after which the head is inclined 30 degree above the horizon in chin to chest position with the vertex positioned towards the ceiling <clears throat> this position is maintained for around 1 minute after which patient is uprighted 3 4 or 5 such maneuvers are done and a repositioning test is done this is how the otogonal debris moves from here in the position 1 to here in the position 2 to here in the position 3 and finally it is repositioned back into the utricle making a cure a verifying side lying test post yakovino maneuver preferably after 1 hour did not elicit any nystagmus and the patient was free of vertigo so this is about the vertical canals posterior and horizontal semicircular canals coming to the horizontal semicircular canal bppv of the horizontal semicircular canals was first invented by maclure in 1985 incidence is around 944% in previous two decades the vertigo is particularly severe in lying supine or in the lateral recumbent position 
there is a short latency of positional nystagmus of two to three seconds and it is direction changing either geotropic or apogeotropic and as has been previously said it could be due to canalolithesis or cupulolithesis either in the canal or to the reticular side the optimal test to evaluate the horizontal semicircular canal is supine roll test srt or pagnini macleo manual which elicits horizontal bidirectional nystagmus on either head roll that is when the patient is taken to the supine neutral position and then the lateral head roll is successively done to one side and to the other side identical pattern of the nystagmus are seen which could be either geotropic where the quick component is beating towards the lowermost ear on lateral head roll to either sides or it could be apogeotropic where the quick component is moving away from the lowermost ear on lateral head roll to right as well as to the left side so this is a model where the right lateral head roll is eliciting a geotropic nystagmus the quick component towards the earth and the slow component is, is away from the earth. In geotropic variant, the involved side is one with the stronger positional nystagmus on supine roll test. The other slide is the apogeotropic horizontal positional nystagmus in which the quick component beats away from the lowermost ear. In this diagram, we can see the lateral head roll to the patient's right elicits in the nystagmus whose quick component is beating away from the lowermost ear. This is the slow component and this is the quick one. In apogeotropic variant, the involved side is one with weaker positioning the stagmas on lateral head roll. Why this occurs? This is exemplified with the left-sided horizontal semicircular canal BPPV of posterior long arm and anterior short arm canalolithiasis. In the long arm canalolithiasis of posterior arm, lateral head roll to the same side causes a ampulopetal deflection while in the anterior arm canalolithiasis the contralateral head roll elicits a ampulopetal deflection and ampulopetal deflection causes a stronger nystagmus that is accordance with the evolved law with this we start our first case this is a 17 year old pale patient came with history of two days of vertigo and his supine roll test on lateral head roll to the right elicits a geotropic nystagmus and if it is geotropic with the quick component beating towards the lowermost ear it has to be identical on the left side also and this indeed was and it was quicker as you can see the more intense nystagmus was on lateral head roll to the left side so this was a case of left sided long non ampullary arm horizontal semicircular canalolithesis Accordingly, he was treated with the Gufoni manual from short sitting patient was taken to the Ips contralateral lateral recumbent position maintained in this position for around one minute after which the head was inclined downwards in the yaw axis for around two minutes after which he was uprighted to the short sitting position again. Two such maneuvers are done in one session of treatment in our center. And a verifying supine roll test is done one hour later, which indeed in this patient did not elicit any nystagmus on the lateral head roll to left and to the right. And there was no vertigo either. And a 24 hours later, supine roll test was also negative. That is elimination of vertigo as well as the positional nystagmus. How this works is shown in this diagram. This is the left sided horizontal semicircular canal having a autoconal debris in its posterior arm as the patient is taken to the contralateral right lateral recumbent position canal becomes vertical and the debris moves towards the exit in the non ampullary arm as the head is inclined downwards in the yaw axis the debris enters into the autoconal into the utricular and this leads to a cure and the canal is cleared when the patient is brought to the upright position. Case number two is an apogeotropic variant due to short anterior arm canalolithiasis. This is a 27-year-old lady with three days vertigo on lateral head roll to the right. She elicited a very strong apogeotropic 
horizontal nystagmus. And if it is apogeotropic on lateral head roll to right, it has to be the identical on the left lateral head roll, but this is weaker compared to that elicited on the right side. So the weaker nystagmus in the apogeotropic variant decides the side. So this was a case of left sided anterior arm cannulolysis of the horizontal semicircular canal. And she was treated with the APNA maneuver. From short sitting, she was taken to the ipsilateral lateral recumbent position. After around one minute, her head was inclined upwards in the yaw axis, and the later position was maintained for around two minutes, after which she was uprighted to the sitting position. And two APNA man maneuvers were done in this patient. A verifying supine roll test after one hour elicited a geotropic nystagmus on lateral head roll to right, very faint nystagmus, but definitely geotropic. And on lateral head roll to the left, it elicited a stronger geotropic nystagmus. So it implies that patient had a transformation of left anterior arm canalolithiasis to the posterior arm canalolithiasis of the left horizontal semicircular canal. How this happened is exemplified in the diagram here, it is the position of otoconal debris in the left anterior arm of the horizontal semicircular canal. As the patient is taken to the ipsilational lateral recumbent position, the canal becomes vertical and the debris moves, which is in the red, towards the utricular exit. And as the head is yawed 45 degrees upward, there could be two things. Either it enters the utricle, clearing the canal, in D1, or more often than not, it goes to the posterior arm of the horizontal semicircular canal from the anterior arm. And this causes the geotropic, apogeotropic to geotropic transformation. And this was again treated with the Gufoni maneuver as we did in that patient of 17 year old, first position, second position for two minutes. And one hour later, this is how that worked Kufoni manual we had shown earlier also. And the verifying soon refined roll test after one hour in this patient elicited no nystagmus on lateral head roll to left or to the right. This was repeated 24 hours later, and this was also negative. So this is a patient of canalolithiasis of anterior of the horizontal semicircular canal which is causing apogeotropic nystagmus. This is a 32 year old lady came with history of vertigo for seven days. The lateral head roll to the right elicited an apogeotropic nystagmus. This I'm scrolling because this nystagmus was of around three minutes duration. I'm scrolling it to around three minutes. Still it is present, you can see. And on lateral head roll to right, Again, an apogeotropic nystagmus was seen. The supine roll test in this patient was repeated three or four times, and the identical pattern of the nystagmus lasting more than one minute and apogeotropic was seen stronger on the right side. So this patient was treated with the head shaking manual. With patient in the short sitting, the head was anti-flex 30 degree and was shaken side to side 30 degrees for 30 seconds for two times. And we repeated a supine roll test after one hour. And this did not elicit an nystagmus on lateral head roll to right or to the left side. A repeat supine roll test was undertaken 24 hours later, and this was also negative. How the head shaking maneuver works is that in cupulolithiasis on the utricular side of the cupula, this you see the debris attached to the utricular side of the cupula as the head is shaken side to side, inertial forces are generated thus disengage the debris from the utricular side and as it is disengaged, it disperses into the utricular matrix. This would bring immediate relief. And the fact that this happened in this case 
was the proof that it was attached to the utricular side otherwise the debris would have dropped into the canal and would have led to either posterior or anterior arm canalolithiasis causing still residual nystagmus during the verifying supra and roll test so this is important matter and we have now just submitted a paper which is accepted we have suggested a algorithm for elicited apogeotropic positional nystagmus during the supine roll test if supine roll test elicits an apogeotropic positional nystagmus if it is less than 1 minute duration you repeat the supine roll test multiple times it could change to apogeotropic with to the geotropic variant and this means that is a canalolith transformation of short anterior arm to the long posterior arm canalolithiasis and treat with bufoni barbecue roll or pulse prolonged positioning if it is more than 1 minute duration repeat supine roll test multiple times it remains same more than 1 minute duration still apogeotropic do a head shaking maneuver because it is highly suggestive of cupulolithiasis sometimes the head shaking maneuver brings about immediate disappearance of the nystagmus on the verifying supine roll test and this is highly suggestive of cupulolithiasis on the utricular side and it transforms to geotropic variant it means that there is cupulolithiasis on the canal side and this can be treated with bufoni barbecue roll or post prolonged positioning and finally even if it is apogeotropic supine roll test it could mean that either the otoconia are tightly adherent or there is a alternate diagnosis positional nystagmus is not always so benign in this person two to three beats of down beating pure nystagmus are seen and this test was done five to seven times in succession the same findings were seen and this patient had a posterior fossa exol arachnoid cyst compressing the nodulus so i have made these papers here apogeotropic central position nystagmus is a sole sign of nodal infarction that can occur and sometimes this central paroxysmal positional vertigo is also seen in the hemorrhage in the cerebellum so differences between the benign paroxysmal positional vertigo and central paroxysmal positional vertigo have been enumerated here on the basis of nystagmus duration direction fatigability course of nystagmus vertigo nausea vomiting during the positional maneuver natural course associated in neurological science brain imaging and repositioning therapy so important is the re repositioning th therapy and need to know when the brain imaging is required so these are the two tables these are from a chapter written by me in the epicon 2021 it i am showing it here because it has youtube links here we show the positional nystagmus and this is the bpp variants and their treatment with physical therapy so take away points are with this i finish my talk here thank you